I have the great privilege in the next few minutes of hanging around with Carlos and also Jason and speaking with Jason about one of the poems in his new book, which is called Heat Wake. It's published by Saturnalia Press. And um, it's fun, Jason, to have a Mod Poe person and the poet of one of our poems in the same, rolled into the same person. I just mm -hmm. think it's great. So I'm looking forward to this. The poem we have um, chosen from the book is called Connected. And I would wonder if you could begin this by just reading it for us. Are you okay with that? I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Um, connected. A long sugar stick. Translucence and transparency. Twirled molecular ribbon. Held dark inside this mouth against this tongue. Scissored this word from printed fiber. Let this persuasive stain dissolve under tongue like a pink snowball held by mammal hand inside an aluminum house or standing in this sunlit creek. Burn this on a pyre of scrapped macaques, research jangled and car blown. Delete this with a clap from air, from the file of words. Scratch this from the sand with pointed stick. This through line will connect you to me, whether you be of tar, of electric, of pheromone spat through tube. So let's begin, Carlos, the title. And don't be intimidated by the fact that the poet, the author, oh, no. who presumably <laughs> meant something, perhaps, we're not going to say intended something, but meant something, he wrote words, is sitting to your left. Leaving that aside, let's you and I spin off possibilities for the meaning of the title. At least say, Carlos, what it's what occurs to you when you see a poem called Connected. Um, well, a few things can start to come to mind. I mean, just if I'm ignoring the rest of the poem and I'm just thinking about the title, like you say, I think, yeah. all right, am I going to be connected to, is this the speaker connected to another person? Is this the speaker connected to um, sort of like humanity as a whole? Um, is this the speaker connected to um, an environment that they are in? Are they connected to me as the reader? Is it a meta poem in that way? Um, and then I'll say that upon first reading through what I got mostly from it, um, with a few other things, was that this poem was trying to get at um, something meta poetic, I think, about the poem connecting to us as a reader. Wow, you got real fancy real fast. Yeah, okay. as is your want. Hit the ground running. <laughs> maybe now. I'll maybe I'll say something basic, and Jason can respond to any of what he's heard. Um, yes, I do ultimately think that this is that one aspect of connected is writer to reader or poet to poem or poet to reader of poem. But first, when we say the word connected. I don't think about the speaker at all. I think that I think of the meaning of connected uh, uh, as a social intimacy. Connected, I'm connected to her. I'm connected to him. We're connected. One almost says when one is has a partner, a life partner, or is married. One almost says we're we're connected. I'm connected with this person. I'm connected to this person. And then there's the internet idea of connected. I'm connected. I'm really connected which sounds more impersonal than the social intimacy connection, such as, he's really wired, he's wired. You know, if you go into someone's apartment, apartment and they have five uh, uh, laptops and uh, all kinds of devices and wires hanging from the ceiling, you say, this guy is wired, connected. And the reason that's relevant is that kind of connection comes through toward, toward the end anyway. Jason, do you want to throw in one sense of connected that will lead us, since you know you, you're the spoiler alert guy since you wrote the poem? Um, I, I would say this is, in, in a way, I think that it's a meta poem. It's a mod poem, meta poem, because I think that. What? I think that this comes out of you pointing to the mug no. and saying this. Wait a minute. This poem was written. During Probably your first, participation in Modpo, if if not the first draft, at least what the poem turned into is 
distinctly and I consciously remember is thinking about the pointing to the mug. All right. This is really cool. <laughs> so Modpo is now including a poem by mm -hmm. a Modpo poet mm -hmm. that is partly about the Modpo idea. Right. So can we hold off yes. saying what that is mm -hmm. until a little later in the conversation? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so we have connected. What I want to do next, Carlos, is look at the first stanza. Mm -hmm. And when I ask you a particular question about the wording, about the grammar and the logic. Okay? All right. A long sugar stick, dash, translucence and transparency. So presumably those two words modify or describe that sugar stick. Mm -hmm. And more, another dash and more description, twirled. In other words, the stick is twirled. Twirled becomes there, therefore an adjective, but it could also be a verb. It could be an active verb if the molecular ribbon is being twirled. But we can also see it as a describer. A long sugar stick twirled molecular ribbon dash and now the word I want to ask you about held as in the phrase held dark inside it too Carlos can be a verb the stick held something mm -hmm. held something inside it could also be a further description of what's going on if it's the verb tell us what is being held dark inside this mouth against this tongue. What could possibly be going on here? And frankly, it could be a very literal meaning, meaning since you're not so many years away from the, uh, a childhood that could, in, <laughs> it could involve sucking on a long sugar stick so, and the happiness thereof. Yeah. This poem is about a lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> in part, yes. yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the long sugar stick is what is being held inside the dark mouth, which to me um, reads as a couple of different things. Um, it could be... Start with the basic. The, uh oh. I don't know you which were, one is you more don't basic. Know. Okay, <laughs> start with anything and I'll decide if you it's tell basic me. or too fancy. You stop okay. me mid-sentence. Mid no, I won't do that. <laughs> um, so one could be like the, the sentence almost is that am i oh you're going theory? fancy okay that's fine the reason you think it might be the sentence itself mm -hmm. you have to say itself a lot in this conversation about jason's poetry the sentence itself is that we're in a poem and here we have a mouth and a tongue right. and it may be something that's not being said but is held inside unsaid mm -hmm. maybe mouth i'm doing a weird mouthing, maybe mouthed, which is the mouth version of the brain thinking about what the next lines could be. That's fancy. Can you be less fancy? I don't know if I can. Okay. Uh, you may well, have to. Jason, you know, <laughs> be the literal Jason, of uh, the, 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 the guy who likes to put a sugar stick in his mouth. Oh, okay. We, okay, Carlos, go ahead. Is it the pen, maybe? No. Is that You're still less being fancy? fancy. Is that... Jason, that can you teach this guy to be literal? <laughs> Or well, maybe there is no literal way of reading this. I don't know. When I was a kid, there would be these Here jars of, Actual of sticks, <laughs> and they were. You look at them, and they have layers, and it looks mm -hmm. like they've been spun, and mm. so it creates like a double helix. Uh, Carlos, going it's inside. A memory. You've be, you've Oops. been hanging around meta poetic modpo <laughs> for so long that you can't do the first level reading. And Jason, who is a very sophisticated poet, who's also as meta poetic as they come, is telling you of a memory of those sugar sticks. And if that is held dark inside this mouth, what is literally being meant, Carlos? <laughs> well, what he's eating eating it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's dark. How is it dark? He's got his mouth closed. Oh, okay. And he's sucking on <laughs> yeah. the sugar stick against the tongue. Right, and it's not just in my mouth. Mm. I'm, to be frank, I'm sucking on it. Right. Yeah, right. and it's so held it's... dark inside. So what's interesting about the... For, that would be what I would call the first reading. Gotcha. Carlos. You gotcha. keep doing the second reading. <laughs> the second reading is, here is a poet starting a poem called Connected. And the first thing we have is 
the image or the idea of things being held inside and not said, not a, a tongue that's sucking darkly but not producing word sounds. Mm -hmm. So now I want to turn to the next set of questions. That's a great first stanza, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really think so, because I guess a reader doesn't know what the hell it is. Right. But then if a reader thinks about Sugar Stick, except for Carlos... <laughs> I tried to give three... <laughs> M dashes just yeah. to be really clear that there's a real really stick there. Mm. Nice job. <laughs> but the M dash, just, okay, and then that's so he's sucking on a sugar stick, but he's also in a poem called Connected, and he's also a poet, the speaker, seemingly. Okay, my second question here is actually the third, because my first question was about the title. Third question. Ready? Carlos, you first. Okay. Since it's a sugar a stick. Okay. okay. This mouth, this tongue, Scissor this word, command verb, again. Scissor this word from printed fiber. Okay, scissor. Let this persuasive stain, standing in this sunlit creek, burn this on a pyre, delete this. Remember how Jason read it. This is a different this. Delete this with a clap from air. Scratch this from the sand. This through line. There's a lot of this is in a poem this short. I know this is a common word, but it ain't this common. This is a poem, haha, in which the poet is using the word this a lot. Next to command verbs. Let this, scissor this, burn this, delete this. Okay, Carlos. He's already Jason has already kind of spoiled the ultimate <laughs> conversation. Spoiled, I mean in a movie, someone tells you about a movie or a TV show, um, by telling us that it has a Mod Po reference to this. But can you say something about the repeated use of this? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's... I like it a lot. Um, and I'm Wait not sure if I'm... He likes it. <laughs> like Good. It. <laughs> Why do you like it? I'm glad. Um... It's it's nice and and if I may jump quickly just to the second stanza now that I'm no, now that I know for sure we're talking about a sugar stick. I don't think anybody knows anything for sure. But okay. Especially <laughs> sugar sticks. Why? Because but, they dissolve. Right. Mm. <laughs> that is attached to my point because I, I really like this duality that happens between then the first and the second stanza because in the first if we're talking about a sugar stick and it's sort of melting in your mouth and it's sort of this like pensive or um uh what's the word i'm looking for anyway i'll skip it but it's this sort of um me not meticulous isn't the right word um action then here when you're talking about what i think of yeah, maybe i'm jumping ahead again Go as ahead. being about you know the the poem this printed fibers maybe the paper or printed fibers paper mm -hmm. this scissor this word the poem or the line or you know these words I've written down let this persuasive stain the ink on the page mm -hmm. sort of melt under your similarly tongue, to the sugar stick similarly mm -hmm. to the sugar mm -hmm. stick mm -hmm. like a pink snowball meaning well this you know pink snowball i think this like well i think of like a snow cone almost like it's yeah, pretty this good. flavorful um thing but it's it goes it's fast. Melts exactly fast. Mm -hmm. it's um what's uh, uh, right basically it, it we melts call fast. that in it's, philly water ice yeah water, water ice. ice snow cone where i come from yeah mm. snow cone Italian and i come ice. from jersey Shaved so ice. we're actually not that aren't you from jersey too i'm from south jersey so south jersey is Still filling. Water ice. Water ice. And North Jersey is snow cone. Right. Okay. Uh, the, or, and then there's somewhere that's an Italian ice. And shaved ice. Right. Yeah. So what do you call the... Okay, I want to ask. But the <laughs> ones that are in the actual cone, are those snow cones too? Yeah. Wow. And water okay. ice. Huh. But anyway, <laughs> we've done a wonderful little ethnography <laughs> of... <laughs> I was curious. But... We can talk about a hoagie and... <laughs> oh, no. Grinder? Hoagie versus submarine. Right, exactly. Never. Some people call it a grinder. Scissor this word. So second stanza really teaches you how to read the first stanza. Because that metapoetic reading at the end of the first stanza, there seems to be words or something stuck inside. And now we're being asked to scissor 
This word, although brilliantly, it's one of the reasons why I like Jason's poetry, is we have no idea which word we're talking about there. It could be this word, the very word, here, or it could be some other thing that got stuck inside. And that that whole process is like sucking on something like a snow cone. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and you've identified the metapoetic evidence. We've got page, we've got ink, probably. And the word this repeated suggests, in a mod post sense, this. The, the poem or the object or, you know, whatever immediate thing we're speaking about. I guess in this case, the poem. Okay, so when I do that, mm. Carlos, because we're going to turn to Jason on this in a second. When I do that, what am I saying? You know, in, in Mod Poe, what am I meaning there? This, the, the object, the cup, or... Maybe I haven't been in Mod Poe too <laughs> <laughs> This is the, the, the denotative act, the indexical pointing uh, that a word does to mug, mm -hmm. the word mug. And basically, I have to use my mouth for this, but... <laughs> when, when when denotation succeeds, right. mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. word mug adheres to the thing, mm -hmm. and there is a relationship that's a successful communicative relationship. Right. Uh -huh. But the problem is, when there's no more mug, putting this down on the floor, I'm sure I'm mm -hmm. going to kick it over. <laughs> when there's no more mug, and I refer to this, or this, mm -hmm. or this... Now the whole world opens up. So what were you thinking about in the Modpo sense when you started to find that your poem was about that Modpo gesture, the indexical word-thing relationship? Well, I think that I became frightened by the word this, frightened by the indexical power of, of that word. A to poet frightened by the indexical power of a word? Yeah. Tell us why, really. Why not? Um, Be worried about being too successful with your deployment of words? I'm worried about its its uh, its power to claim in a way its power the power it invests the speaker with in which the speaker claims an object in the world is maybe the most... Is, is that related? That power, is that related? We know it's related to the, forgive the metaphor, but the um, imperialism or colonialism of people naming things and therefore mm -hmm. having them and owning them. Here, maybe, that ha that's what appears with the scrap macaques, the experimental lab animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's that kind of fear, like, what are we doing with our determinative naming? And what are we Sorry, doing ethics? with our um, determinative cl claiming? Because I think that, I guess in thinking over and over again about the word this, I was increasingly struck by thinking about it in relationship to, to space and time, and that it always requires a positioned speaker who is in spatial relation to the thing marked this. There, You can't be um, in an abstract position and say this. Are you reacting, when you wrote this poem and began to think about the mod po this, mm -hmm. which is really in the beginning the Dickinsonian this, mm -hmm. Uh, then becomes the Laurin Niedekerian this and the right. Sid Cormanian this and all that. What we do there is we're celebrating um, for occupation this, which is an airy, thin, doesn't physically exist state of having uh, something stuck in your mouth mm -hmm. not coming out, and when it comes out, it's merely this. I assume you're having a positive response to that kind of this mm -hmm. and a negative response to a world of this where there's this supposed success. Right. Well, and as an act of my... In a way, how can... Maybe the, like in the question that I'm asking that I don't have the answer to 
is how did two people share a this? How if, do they share a this? If this is a, if this is a, an in, necessarily a positioned individual speaker's act of positioning vis-a-vis -vis the object. Oh my word! This is a meta meta poem. This is a poem called Connected, which is about whether this connects us. <laughs> and how could we have a this for occupation this? How can we have occupations that are the same? Yeah. Um, whoa. Connected is ironic. Well, we're not. The connected. only way that I could. On, on the Slow Po forum. That this is the Mod Po off season. Uh, yes, yeah. the, the Mod Po off season is talking about this poem with a number of brilliant Mod Po participants. And um, one thing that popped into my mind that I thought this was, this was related to is not only the act of the pointing to the mug, but also. There's a, a, I think the most watched TED talk is by a uh, neuroscientist, Jill Bolte Taylor, who had a stroke, and during her stroke, the uh, left side of her brain shut off, or was shutting off, and that essentially is the denotative part of the, the brain. And so she was purely in uh, a cloud of connotation, and a cloud of extension of the body into space without... What, what Dickinson would call dwelling. Yes, dwelling beyond the, the body and in in merged with the space in which it occupies. Um, and so in that state, there could be no this because the body is not... The body is dispersed. There's no... Um, as soon the the things are trans blending into other things, the self is becoming. There's there ceases to be. If I say the mug is this, this mug, I I am not the mug. The mug separates me. The word this separates me from what I designate as this. Yes. And so, so, the experiment in the poem is to imagine. Because this is, I've always thought, I've always thought of as one of my favorite words, as a word that it does, it is such a slip of a word that does such a powerful um, embrace, em, embracing act, mm -hmm. and that, what, what if we see the word this as suddenly uh, turn it upside down or backwards and, and imagine a world without this. The poem becomes meta-poetic meta only when we realize that the word that you want to scissor out or delete is not a word of a poem, which would be meta-poetic, but this. Mm -hmm. So scissor this word this is ironic because the word that you want to scissor is this. Mm -hmm. When we get down to the second to last stanza, which we should look at now, you, you're much more explicit. Mm -hmm. Delete this with a clap from air. A clap from air I take as a kind of deus ex machina, like a, a magic, the, the mm -hmm. magic. Right? Delete this with a clap from air, from the file of words, as if there's like a zuska... Uh, li RAM, ra ready access memory of a whole bunch of words, right? From all the words that scratch this from the sand with the pointed stick, I get this image of ephemeral writing, of, mm -hmm. of being, you know, drawing at the beach and having the waves, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Delete this with a clap from air, from of the file of words. Scratch this from the sand with pointed stick. So, Carlos, yeah. what happens? when you do this thing that Jason just described mm. of not just deleting a word, which we know Laurie Niedeker does and all, this is a very Niedekerian uh, 
delete this with a clap, scratch this. It sounds like HD and Nitiker the way the the way the rhythm goes. By the way, but um, if what's being scratched is this, and the poem is ephemeral, made by a in the sand with a pointed stick, what do we have left, Carlos? Well, do you feel disabled by the whole experience? Well, um, I'm not sure. I thought I was going to answer your question until you said the last bit, but I'll go ahead and say what I was going to say. Please, that's the way it works generally. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, well, sort of like you were saying, if we delete this, it's an interesting concept saying that, well, if we delete this word this, we delete our ability to separate ourselves from whatever it is we're pointing at, um, such that, you know, then we actually are connected in a way. Because we think, and maybe then the title is sort of ironic, but also sincere in that, you know, I think that by saying this and acknowledging this and many poems that talk about this or whatever object they're saying, there's the sense that, oh, I'm really connecting with this object that I'm pointing to or this person or just my ability to perceive it. And that's a connection. But what you're saying then is well, no, that actually separates you from the object. That I can't talk about this because to say this separates it from me. And mm -hmm. now I'm an observer and it's an object being observed. Mm -hmm. um, which is interesting though because it's a poem about that. <laughs> so you're pointing at us pointing at this, which is... <laughs> cool, meta, meta, meta. Which is <laughs> actually, I think the last stanza unironizes un yeah. the, the, the title. I think so. And I think this is where Jason's, and I, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I know the poet, mm -hmm. I think that Jason's extraordinary humaneness mm -hmm. comes through as he seeks in the abyss of this having been cut out, mm -hmm. some kind of connection otherwise. Mm -hmm. I don't think that this through line, although through line could be an ironic word because it's not the kind of word that you would normally use mm -hmm. unironically. Maybe we should pause on that ter on that term. What's a through line? Probably this is not a word that your generation uses much, but Jason, give us one connotation of through line or definition. I think of it as a, a kind of, maybe I'm using it wrong, but it's a kind of map word. Yeah, a map. Yeah. Uh, through line is a, um, a consistent thought that takes you through something difficult. It's sometimes in political speech. Mm -hmm. The through line is the bullshit that connects <laughs> all the abstraction mm -hmm. that the politician has just uttered. Right. Um, uh, in in, in uh, corporate speak, a through line is, um, is how we emerge at the end with a consistent message or... Mm -hmm. Well, I think I, li I like the... Because it doesn't, and it's and and sorry, and in networking, right, right, through line would be the circuit in the Dickinsonian sense, the circuit that's complete, right. Uh, Success in circuit lies. Yes, the through line. That's and I think that uh, that's what we mean here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the the word itself is an oxymoron to me because a line draws a border between two things. So for a line to be something that takes one through. Is except if the line is the line of a poem mm. which moves left to right and does connect. Exactly. In fact, in the enjambment of this through line will connect you. Mm -hmm. The non enjamming happens right after you. Mm -hmm. So there is a connect a through line that connects. Mm -hmm. This is really like triply referring, I think, mm -hmm. which is hilarious considering that the poem is about the problems of referring. <laughs> this through line will connect you. To me, let's stop there. So, Carlos, your in initial metapoetic reading works here. Say the obvious, please. Uh, writer to the reader. In the Sid Corman sense. Right. Now we're going to go on. So this through line will connect you to me. So after all this agony, I still think that you could connect to me in this ghostly, I wrote a poem and it's published in a book and you don't know me kind of way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we go on, and here's where the hard part again happens. It may be just Jason being a comic poet and not wanting to settle on something so sincere and sentimental. Uh, the through line will connect you to me, whether you be of tar, of electric, 
of pheromone spat through tube. Carlos, before we turn to Jason, who can help us with these lists, there's three items. Sure. You could, the person who's being connected to could be of tar. Right. Could be of electric. Or could be of pheromone spat through tube. Do any one of those three. Um, okay. So, actually, I think pheromone spat through tube just clicked for me. But Go ahead. Um, what is it? Oh, well, I don't, see, I don't want to say it and then be wrong. Um... But Do you I'm, think at this point in this conversation, <laughs> wrong is wrong. an option? Um, okay, so um, tar and electric, I'm thinking objects. Tar maybe a street. Electric, you know, my toaster, whatever, that I'm pointing at. So you're connecting to these objects. But wait a minute. But wait then, a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, wait. Minute. Whoa, whoa. wait. Okay, Whether there's a you be, the you, <laughs> no, I, I don't yeah, yeah. mean to suggest that. Mm. You, the you w will connect you to me. The right. you is the reader, we said. Okay. Or the person grappling with this idea. Okay. Whether you be of tar. In other words, the, per the reader is of tar. What does it mean to, for a person to be of tar? You have I'm no not idea, sure. Right? Maybe a worker or something like that. I'm not, okay, that's nice and know. literal. I like that. I can, all I can think of is... Tar pits. I think of like somebody who's expired or extinct. Mm -hmm. um, it could also be someone who smokes a lot. Jason, what do you you have any thoughts on that? Tar. Um, Can a person be of tar? Um, yeah, but I I think in a way I probably had carbon there. Yeah, and good. Crossed That's it sort out. of like my tar pits thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Somebody so, long gone. So. And I'm, or that's it. So of is kind of there's a implied made, made of tar, right? Yeah. And we are indeed carbon. And are we made of electric as well, Carlos? Uh, sure. You're a scientist, aren't you? Not really. <laughs> Maybe. Um, like your uh, nerves, nervous system. The nervous system is basic, and pheromone. Um, this. Did you study this in high school biology? Um, I mean, yeah, fair, but it's the spat through tube yeah, line. Yeah, let's stick with pheromone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, people have, well, pheromones, things that are, uh, make you attracted to another person. Yeah. Uh, S smell or sometimes it's an saliva. Enzyme thing, right? Yeah, it's a... Right, and well, it's something uh, that is is just a disembodied... It's a hormone that is released from a the body. Hormone. So whether you are... It's, it's a very sincere statement, in my opinion. Whether you are of carbon, made of carbon, or whether you're made of the nervous system, or whether you're made of hormones, whatever it is, this through line will connect you to me. Wow. Okay, so what I would like us to do each is to say a final word about... I mean, I'd like to say why I picked this poem to include in Modpo. Um, but uh, final thoughts on this, or something that we didn't get to that you wanted to add. Jason, you yeah. first. Um, your toaster could eventually be an artificially intelligent toaster. <laughs> and there's also the movie The Brave Little Toaster. Yeah. So I did mean to imply also uh, non non-human intelligences mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. like a, something that could be a purely electric or like an emergent artificial intelligence. That's a very underrepresented group, I think. In <laughs> I think so. <laughs> well, not when, if we give Jason the field. <laughs> um, Carlos thought you, you haven't said this but I'm reading your mind you thought of some kind of DNA-ishness yes. in this and then we have the experimental the, the, the primates that we're experimenting on so there's this, there's this vague and actually somewhat demo demonic and um, foreboding sense of toying with humanness that's in the back of this. Do you want to say one more thing about that? Yeah, when I first read it, um, especially when I had misunderstood the first very literal stanza about the candy, about yeah. the candy I was reading it through um, 
and got this sense of like heredity almost, um, mm -hmm. molecular ribbon as DNA. Um, and then there were these stains, uh, things dissolving beneath your mouth, and for some reason my first thought was like a swab for DNA or something mm -hmm. like that. And then at the end, with the pheromones, things like that, I got this sense of connectivity like through heredity, through a kind mm -hmm. of passing on of generations, as well as this metapoeticness. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure if that was intended or, or mm -hmm. not. But. I see this contemplation mm. of, I see Jason, the speaker, the poet, observing someone with a snow cone. It's held by an, a mammal hand. Yeah, right? mammal hand as well. It, it's held by a mammal hand. Um, it's such a strange situation for a mammal <laughs> to, be, to be in. And that, so whether you be of carbon or electricity, we're all, we're all those things. Ultimately, we're just mammals holding snow cones, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Jason, um, you already gave your final thought, but uh, did you want to add something to this uh, DNA-ishness? Uh, um, that's point? that's definitely implied. I mean, I, I I don't know what I'm doing when I'm writing a poem, and something just emerges. So, um, and I I would want whoever's watching not to feel like anything I say is is a, the final word. Is the yes. final word. It's I, I'm every time I read in part this sounds bizarre, but I write poems to find out what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. So um I wouldn't there may be lots in here that that have yet that I that I have no idea are, are Which at work. is why it's so cool that the poem is responsive to ModPo, because what you just described is what we have been advocating mm -hmm. in ModPo all along, which is that writing poems and also reading poems is the act of finding out what is meant, mm -hmm. or finding out your own meaning as you go through. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to ask you finally, what it is that you're saying about the modpo this ultimately um i wanted to just add uh the to not uh take the modpo this for granted i guess and to to in, interrogate everything Mm. And to, um, but at this at the same time, that Mod Po is is a way of deep connection among people, and that I wonder that the how a poem, which doesn't include its referent with it. I mean, we can have a mug that says this on it, right? But we can also have a poem that's just words and not other material that can be spoken. Except for the printed fiber, but whatever. Right, exactly. There well, is always something, right? There's always some substrate, right? Yes, there but, is. But um, to the way the poem perhaps fights, fights its substrate yes. to um, create a, a cloud within which people can gather and mingle. That's so beautifully put. I just want to say one more thing, which is some, a version of what you just said. When I saw this poem and I read it, and I knew it was responsive to the, the mod po this, the whole question mm -hmm. of denotation and connotation and so forth, I got very happy about it because I thought that's one way or other you're saying, and you just said a version of this, that we can connect, that you, that you and I, that there are lots of yous and I's that can connect in both senses of connection here. Mm -hmm. One is the social intimacy of connection, of gathering around a poem as a third entity. Mm -hmm. The other is connectivity, network, being wired, mm -hmm. which is not printed fiber, but closer to electric and pheromone, actually, mm -hmm. um, that humanity, 
kind of goes through the air right. or the waves is kind of a heat wave mm -hmm. in itself. Mm -hmm. But you're your, your book is called Heat Wake. <laughs> so there's a version of that. But nonetheless, I believe that Connected is mm -hmm. sincere and unironic in this poem, even though you're taking us through our paces and making us doubt all along that connection is possible. Mm -hmm. But in the end, there is a through line, mm -hmm. and it is connected. Right, and how can we have a collaborative... If this starts out as a one-on-one, a... One -on -one, a, a an observer and an object, how can we change that into, change this into a, a collaborative this? And what do we do when the poem is like that long sugar stick and just, or the meaning, or the mm -hmm. words, just melts in your mouth and never gets out? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's ultimately what for occupation this means. Dickinson really wasn't interested in communication so much as trying to understand what it's like to have these words melting in her mm -hmm. mouth in that dark space, unsaid. Right. You know. Well, this has been great. Carlos, thank you. Jason, yeah. thank you not only for joining us, but for writing such a great poem. Thank you. And I'm just going to hold up the book again. It's called Heat Wake, and it's by Jason Zuska, and it's published by... Saturnalia books. Saturnalia books. Yeah. In the in the year two thousand and fifteen. Sixteen. Sixteen. Oh, it's brand new. It's brand new. Okay, great. It can be pre ordered at this point and will be officially published on March fifteenth. All right. Thank you both so much. Mm -hmm. This has been fun. Thanks. Thanks, Al.